Okay, let's get the uh, road mic uh, slapped on me here. Yeah, I think that'll work. Awesome, awesome. Hey, good afternoon, guys. This is this has been an adventure already. See, it was one of those beautiful days, and I'm like, man, I got to get out of my office. I started thinking. I had this RLD uh, design. Uh, cap that I put on this thing about 60 days ago. Now this is for my other company, Four Wheel Drive Talk, that I figured, hey, I can start shooting some B-roll on this thing and start that 60 day review on this thing. So I decided it's, uh, it's four o'clock right now. I decided to get out of the office uh, late, head over to the spot. Just wait for the train to go through. Few moments later. That thing's been buzzing back and forth quite a bit here. Anyways, so I figured I'd get out here and shoot this video on this thing, start getting some of the, the 60 day footage that I need for that. And so I get out here and set up my R5 up on the uh, the tripod here. And I noticed two things, two things. Got to turn it on, no memory card. Okay, not a problem. I have this little satcho, satcho? I have this memory card holder here with a ton of CF Express cards and worst case scenario, a buttload of SD cards in here. So I stick the first one in there, full. <laughs> stick the second one in there and unfortunately I have a little space on there. So what I've decided also what I need to do this evening is I just had a new 12 terabyte GTEC drive raid thing come inside or get or, or I'm sorry got delivered last week so I'm gonna take the time this afternoon or this evening and I'm gonna go through all my memory cards on here which is going to be an event because there's quite a handful of them on here and dump them all so therefore when I get a location it, <laughs> to make sure if I need a car they are empty now the other thing that I noticed here is over the course of damn I've been in photography now for 18 years aside from dating myself right there I've noticed there's one line, as I'm pulling my gear out, there's one line that I have not crossed. I would say I came close, but not really the case. I mean, you may be saying, Alex, what is that? What line have you not crossed in the last 18 years? And guys, that is, oh, another train. So, that's 10. One eternity later. All right, I'm guessing we have five minutes before that next train or 10 minutes before that next one comes by here. So anyways, getting back to this here, the line that I've not crossed is I have never used a hard case. Now, let me take that back. I've used, I've done reviews on, I think there's three or four hard cases that I've done reviews on over the course of the last 13 years that Photography Talk has been around, but I've never, I've been using this thing for 60, speaking of 60 days, this is the Manfrotto. This thing right here is the Manfrotto Tough 55. And well, it's actually a Pro Light Tough 55. And this case here, I've been using now for, actually, I think it's over 60 days. And I actually really enjoy this. And I've been asked a handful of times over the, over the past as far as why I don't like hard cases. And for me, hard cases have always been big, bulky, and the biggest thing, the biggest thing that I never really cared for, now full disclosure, it's been about six years prior to this one that I've actually tested or actually got my hands on a, on a hard case. Um, and the thing that really bugged me the most is you'd have a case and then if you wanted to get the inserts, so therefore everything would fit inside nice and neat, you outsource to another company and they would laser, you know, they would ask, you would have to send them a, a um, a list of all the gear that you have. Uh, and then, now I never did this, but I, I spoke to them and if I recall correctly, you send them a list of all the gear that you have and they laser etch or cut this foam to fit inside one of these hard cases. So therefore you could fit all your pieces in exact locations. The part that I didn't like about that is, now I know with me, my configuration, when, when I go heading out, my bag is never the same. I'm heading out with different needs each time that I go heading out. So I don't like to be locked down to what gear that I have to bring. I mean, you can't, if, if this is, if this hole right here is fit for this, this is 100 to, fi, or 100 to 500, and let's say I didn't want to bring this, but I wanted to cram in there, not a good example, here's a 50 millimeter, and that does fit in there, but there's a lot of other space in here. But the point being here is, if I want to, 
rearrange things. I don't like to be, especially when you pay what you do for a hard case, a good quality hard case, I don't want to be locked down or be limited to as far as what gear or the alternative is you go out there and purchase another one of those little casings and I don't remember what they cost. They may, might have been inexpensive, but the point being is inexpensive or not, if you have a case like this and then you have a, a number of different uh, keys, shall we say, the inserts, that takes up a lot of space. <sighs> I thought I shut the GoPro off. That takes up a lot of space. And so, hence the reason I never paid attention to them. And so, they were big and bulky, and I felt they were limited in terms of how you could set them up. But guys, what I'm gonna be talking to you about today is a, technically it's over a 60 day review on this thing. But this thing, this Manfrotto ProLite Tough 55, I've been using this thing and semi beating the piss out of this thing for a little bit over 60 days, and I absolutely love it. And that's what I was chuckling about here as I was pulling things out. I was like, usually when I do reviews on, on gear, I always go back to a handful of bags that, as you guys have, if you watch some of my earlier videos where I did my top favorite, I always kind of fall back to, I think there's six or seven bags that I always fall back to. I've been using this and I can see myself using this a hell of a lot longer. So with that said, in this video, you're gonna learn why this case, why this case has changed my view of hard cases. Let's just go with it. And so with that said, now, before we get going into that though, one little favor I do have to ask you, you see, we put these videos together every single time to help you guys stay informed. Well, in this particular case, make a educated decision. If you're on the fence about getting a hard case, our goal here is hopefully we can provide you with kind of the insight and a little bit more uh, understanding as far as what I think of this. You may agree, you may not, but at least you're gonna be, if you decide to buy one of these cases, you know what you're going to expect. I thought I heard another train coming. And so before another train comes, guys, so if you could do me a big favor, hit the like button down below. If you uh, find some value with this video, that sure would be much appreciated. That said, my friends, pull up a seat in, let's go. You know, that uh, let's go thing really doesn't work out in the field when I'm getting back into, uh, heading back in my studio. So uh, we'll go as soon as I, uh, I pack up all my gear. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so we are going to finish let me get some light in here first. Boom and boom. So every seven minutes that train is going back and forth and that would take, actually that'd be more pretty annoying with this video. So I decided to just bring it back here in the studio. So we'll finish up that here. So let's kind of pick up where we had left off and start taking a quick look at some of the specs and features of this bag. Let's start off with the size. This thing is a 30 liter capacity, so there's plenty of space for all kinds of different gears. Now the exterior dimensions of this is 21.65 inches, you know, the lengthwise. The height of this here is 9.5 inches, and the width is 13.77. So again, this is big enough to carry many different pieces of gear, but also small enough. Here's the key. The, the key to this is it's small enough to bring on as a carry-on. Now this thing has big, beefy pull release latches right here that are easy to latch and open, yet there's a integrated, well actually it's the little red switch right in the back there, lever in each of these here that, that's going to prevent the latch from being accidentally open, which is really nice. Now the case also has a telescopic handle, let me flip this over here, bring it down here, okay you pop this thing up, so which is really nice and of course wheels for easy maneuvering. Now there's also a couple padlock points for added security as well, right along the side here with the same latches. Now the case has additional attachment points for adding additional options, like for example, a tripod bag, uh, a laptop bag, or even a harness system to convert the bag into a backpack or convert this case into a backpack. All right, let's crack open the interior and talk about the airtight interior compartment. Now this has CPS dividers with shock absorbing foam and four layers of pre-cubed foam. Now additionally, the foam in the inside of the lid, as you can see right up here, is to keep your gear snug in place. Now the pre-cubed foam can also be moved around as needed. So yeah, this gives you the ability to tailor fit for your gear. And I'll grab 
here is, let's get this in frame here. So this is a, there's nothing on this side. This actually came in the box when this thing came, but you can get a sense of all these different configurations that you can move this around or basically set this thing up with. I went with quite simple. <laughs> Now the slick part is this case is dust resistant and moisture resistant. So it also is impact resistant and can withstand extreme temperatures. And the case just weighs under 10 pounds. Now, obviously without all the gear, which sounds like a lot, but surprisingly is very light. And more on that in a bit. Now, obviously some of the specs are perhaps a little bit more important for photographers. The ability to lock the case, for example, is a great feature when it's full of all your expensive photography gear. Now, the adjustable padded divider set in a minute, we'll, we'll go from an overhead view, really gives you loads of options for tailoring the space for all your dedicated or your delicate gear for that matter. And also being airtight, impact resistant, dust resistant, and weather resistant is a huge bonus for keeping all your gear safe when it matters. So you may be saying, Alex, well, what are your favorite features and what are my least? Let's find out. Now, the first thing that I notice about this bag bag okay this case is the absolute or is the weight itself now over the years I, I think i shared with you earlier i've tested a handful of cases and for me this is what i was talking about one of the one of the turnoffs for me on a lot of the cases that i've tested over the past has been the actual weight this case right here is now minus I have a bunch of gear in here right now, so it weighs a lot more than the 10 pounds, but the case by itself is actually less than 10 pounds, which is surprisingly pretty light. Now the carry-on size is great as well, so you get the room that you need to transport all your gear, but in a case that is easy to maneuver, and as I mentioned earlier, that is carry-on approved. Now the silent wheels and the telescopic handle are really there to help out with all that as well. So from a size standpoint, from a weight and maneuver standpoint, this bag is, or this case rather, is really spot on. Now the second benefit of this case is the protection that it provides. Now as I noted a moment ago, you have an airtight compartment inside a tough hard plastic shell on the outside the combination of the two really gives you the ultimate protection for your gear now as many of you know i do a lot of overlanding so there's geez there's dust there's snow extreme temperatures and other environmental conditions that are absolutely tough can be brutal on your photography gear but with this bag Honestly, I worry a lot less about my gear, which allows me to focus more on navigating difficult trails, setting up camp, and so forth. A third pro is definitely the functionality that this bag has to offer. Now for me, having the ability to adjust the foam inserts, to adapt to different camera bodies, lenses, drones, or whatever the hell I wanna put into this thing, depending upon what I'm shooting for the day, is so invaluable. So now if you're like me, you have all kinds of gear and many different kit arrangements. So with this case, it's easy to simply add, remove, move padded inserts to accommodate whatever gear I need to bring with me. Now look, I'd be remiss if I did not mention at least the build quality or as one of the benefits for this particular case. And while this thing is lighter than what you would think, it certainly, guys, it doesn't feel cheap or flimsy. On the contrary, the hard plastic shell feels quite robust. I mean, the wheels operate really nice and the large locking clamps, ooh, we gotta talk about these locking clamps here, have a really smooth action that really give you that very satisfying click noise when they're locked down. You know what's funny is, last year I did the review on the Nomadic Peter McKinnon uh, backpack, and if you remember off that review, they have a bunch of magnets all over the place, and you get this really, here's the battery case, you get this oh so nice noise that comes out of it. These locks here, when you hear these things go down, you know they are ready for business. You ready for this? I'm gonna I'm gonna quiet here so you can actually hear this. Ooh, you know I can do better than that. Let's get them both at the same time. Oh yeah. Now if you fly a lot, the integrated automatic pressure valve is a nice addition that will prevent the case from compressing down when the aircraft is pressurized. Now something far less important that I still consider a pro of this bag is this thing looks great. All right, I know aesthetics are not everything, but the black case, the gray foam, and the gray foam inside this thing and the red accents really look pretty awesome. In fact, many of you may know my overlanding rig is the same color th scheme. It's something that is completely superficial to point out, but it really does look great. 
All right, now let's talk about the cons of this thing. Now, when I review gear, I strive to put it through its paces so I can identify things that I don't like or that don't work as well as they, they you would like them to do. Now, the fact of the matter is, this case, you know, I've had over 60 days now, I mentioned that earlier, um, and I really wanted to do a 30-day review on this thing, but you may be saying, well, why it's over 30 days? Why did I do that? Well, when I watch when I watch somebody reviewing a piece of gear or whatever the hell it may be, if they don't point out some cons or some negatives, my radar goes off. And I just, there's always, usually there's always something you can nitpick about. And so at the 30 day mark, and I'll share with you the one thing that, that was a slight little issue. Um, but other than that, I had nothing that I didn't like about this thing. So I decided to spend another 30 days with it, hoping that I could find, I could beat the hell out of it more, something would fail on it. And this thing has actually done a very good job. So with this bag, there really isn't much to speak of in terms of things that I just don't like. Now, in fact, the one problem that I was talking about a moment ago is the telescoping handle right here was a little difficult to pull out at first. Now, let me share with you here. So they talk about you pull this thing out and you pull up. It's straightforward. Well, here's my challenge with this because I didn't read the direction and so I just went with it. So if you grab this piece right here, if you grab, see, you, there's a little hook there that, and if you've raised this bag up like this, the handle is up a little bit. This, oops, my hand was on. If this is if this is pulled up a little bit like this, and you try pulling it out, it doesn't come out. You have to push the handle down, pull out, and it comes up super easy. So that was my sticking point, is because I had lift the bag up. So this is up just a little bit. It's resting up on the hook. It does not open. You have to push down. Here's what I found. <laughs> no, I didn't want anything, Siri. So that's it. That was, that's actually the only gripe that I have against this bag is, and that just took a few minutes to figure out, there we go, get that thing back in there, why it wasn't opening up. You just push the handle down and boom. It is, it's actually quite a clever way of concealing this in the bag, which is really, really nice. Otherwise, I have been utterly impressed with this bag. It has really proven to be a well-made, supremely functional case that really is packed with all sorts of utility. So look, whether you're a professional photographer or videographer and you want a solid case that will protect your gear, whether you, hell, you're in your backyard or on a mountaintop, this case is really going to fit the bill. Now, if you want to learn more about this uh, case or pick up one for yourself, I'm going to put a link in the description below. All right, now with that out of the way, let's shift gears here and talk about our current giveaway. We have three great prizes this month. We have a Hazard 4 pillbox camera bag. We have a Haida M15 filter set. And of course, the $100 Adorama gift card. As always, entering the giveaway is really simple. Step one, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Step two, leave a comment below. In fact, the more of our videos that you watch and leave a comment on, the more more chance that you have to win. So get watching some of our other videos and leave some comments. Step three, register on Photography Talk and introduce yourself in the form. Now, if you happen to register on the site and introduce yourself during one of the last giveaways, you're still eligible to win. But friend, as I keep saying over and over again, swing on by, say hello, post some photos. We would love to see you. And friend, that is it. For complete details on the giveaway or how to register on the site or how to say hello in the form, check out the description below. Good luck. All right, guys, before we go signing off, if you enjoy this sort of content, be sure to head over to Photography Talk and sign up for a free account. We have all sorts of resources over there, whether you're a landscape photographer, portrait, nature, or somewhere in between. Ton of stuff over there. And then also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you found some value with this video, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below if you're currently not subscribed to the channel. Friend, we would love to have you part of the family. And last but not least, might as well smash, kick that bell, so therefore you're notified each time that we come out with a video just like this one. That's it guys, well, I'm gonna be jumping out of my studio now so you get out there, stay healthy, and take your best shot.